Okay, guys, welcome to episode seven of Back to Basics, where we are teaching my beautiful fiance Jessica how to trade. Um, again, if you're on either of our channel and you're just tuning in at this point, this is episode seven, so just go back and take a look, and there's a playlist on each channel, and it will go through in order. So last week we did support and resistance. Uh, this week we're going to do statistics. So again, if you guys don't know who I am and you're on Jessica's channel, I build a lot of the algorithms for Trade Ideas AI. I'm an auto trader or statistical trader by trade. Uh, so I love math and statistics and, and... I don't. Not so much. So this is just a theory. There'll be no math equations. There'll be no X plus Y over Great. Q or anything. It's I'm going to try to make this as realistic as possible. And I even got a whiteboard app. Uh, in case we got to draw stuff out. So once here are our socials you're seeing on the screen. If you're on my channel, go to the link underneath the video and that will take you to Jessica's. And when she get builds up to 100 subs, she'll be able to get the channel there. Uh, Twitters, Instagrams, all of that uh, will be covered as well. Um, so just follow us there and we'll let you know when new videos are out or I don't know, mostly pictures of our dog. Yeah, really. He's cute. To be honest. Okay, so statistics. <laughs> I'm excited and you're, you're oh. more mortified. So everything in life, and I guess you're probably even learning more about statistics with this whole COVID thing going on. There's everyone's trying to give you their own angle based off different statistics. But in, in trading, these things are incredibly important because I always talked about before how you know, the best traders in the world are right 60% of the time, and then it's all risk management, and, and anything that has an uncertain outcome benefits from looking at statistics. So the main purpose of this lesson will be just a basic introduction of uh, normal distribution, standard deviation, why the market doesn't conform to those things, and what we can glean of it as traders. You, you look scared. Yeah, well. So... First thing is the law of large numbers, right? So there's a, a saying that uh, tasty trade, they always say trade small, trade often. And this is because we're always going to try to get to some statistical outcome with our trading, right? It's, you know, I talked about support and resistance. We're going to go into trends and, and all of this, you know, we're not done the technical side of things, but this is an important break to show you why technicals work. Um, and the first thing is the law of large numbers. So a lot of people, they'll look at a chart and, you know, I'll say something like, look, this hammer candle has a statistical edge of going higher. And then they'll see the hammer and the stock tanks and they're like, okay, well, technical analysis is bullshit, yeah. right? But that's not what we're looking at. We're looking at the law of large numbers. And one of the best quotes that I, I hear is flip a coin three times and tell me what the probability of reaching heads is, right? think about it if you flip a coin three times you can either hit heads once mm -hmm. heads twice right or heads three times right none of which are 50 50 okay but we know if you flip a coin the odds are 50 50 right so what's happening is you have too small of a sample size if you're just looking at three to get what we know the outcome is bear with us folks this could be a long <laughs> one <laughs> but Right, so if I flip a coin, and this is what this next one, this next slide is here. So a bunch of squiggly lines, but essentially what this chart is, is somebody flipping a coin a certain number of times, and each line is a different trial. So they flipped a coin a total of a thousand times, uh, a thousand times, three times, right? So the black line is them flipping a coin a thousand times. The green line and the red and the blue, sorry, so four times is the same. Right. So you can see that under between the first one flip and a hundred flips, the what the actual result is was way different than 50 50. OK, right. You having problems reading this? I can go over. This is important. <laughs> you didn't tell me reading would be involved. Ooh. Uh -oh. There we go. Focus up. Um, so. All right. Let's follow this black line. I'm following the black line on the screen. Okay, so each of the colored lines, actually, let's ignore all the lines except the black one. Okay. Right, it's one, that's one study. 
So think of what's happening is the guy flips the coin and he writes down whether it's head or tails. And then he flips it again and he writes down whether it's head or tails. And the whole time he's doing this, he's adding up every time he flips a coin and then trying to figure out what the probability of flipping a coin is. Okay. Right? So what happened was he added the first time it was a 100% chance of heads, for example, because he only had one flip and it was head. Right. So the next time he flipped it, it was also heads. It still a, says a 100% chance of heads. And then the next time he flips it, it's tails. Now the, he's saying it's a 66% chance that it's heads because you have two heads, one tail. Okay. As you go on, a lot of people say, okay, if you flip a coin 10 times, you probably will get a good estimation of whether what the probability of getting heads is. But what turns out is 10 is just right here. So at 10, he was still saying it was a 60% chance of getting heads. Mm -hmm. And then you can see that later on, when he's at his about 200th coin flip, the poor bastard who's flipping the coin this much, he's saying it's actually like a 45% chance that's heads. Okay. So he had to flip a coin a thousand times before he got that it was a 50-50. <laughs> right. Which we know what the probability is, right? There, there's very few things in life that you know exactly what the probability is right okay right? so this we had a goal to get to but this is why you see a lot of uh crap in the media and stuff and why you always hear me kind of harp about whenever you give me a study i always say how'd they do it where is it from all of this because if i flipped a coin <laughs> when i give you a study well when, when anything you're... comes out of my mouth people i need to have a fact checked just Stats, putting that out there that's what i do <laughs> But you could see how I could flip a coin three times and I could hand you a piece of paper and say there's a 66% chance that if you flip a coin, it hits heads. Okay. And how my study has shown that and I was honest about my study, but it's wrong because the number's too small, right? There is no way it's a 60% chance okay, to right. get heads, yep. right? So what you would do is you would look at that study and say there's no way that's valid. You'd hand it back to the person. Okay. Right? So then each of these lines are a different time that somebody flipped that coin. Okay, right, so the blue one, they got tails. First. Got it, right. okay, yeah. Right, so, and this is just to show, and this is just called, in mathematics, it's called the law of large, large numbers, right? If I wanna find, we can just use another example, if I wanted to find the average height of a man, and I walk up and I talk to two dudes who are twins and 6'6", six, six, and I say, well, average height of the guy is 6'6". Six, six. It's just, it's incorrect, not because I was dishonest, but because my sample size was not right. large enough, right? Got it. Even, even going further, if I went to Sweden and I took all the heights of the guys there and I just said, that's, that's good for the entire world. We know there's some popular, you know, these guys are Vikings and there's some people who are way shorter. And it, it was, even if I did a million men in Sweden, it's still not a good statistical sample. Okay. Right? just not representative of the world. So the reason that this is important is because you have to understand that even if you develop a great trading strategy that has a 70% accuracy, which is just better than like everyone else on planet Earth, then three out of 10 times, you're gonna lose. So if you if you build the strategy and you're like, it's great, I've got a 75% win rate right. or a 70% win rate, and then I trade five times and I lose three mm -hmm. times and I make profit one, and then break even, then you're like, oh, my strategy sucks. And you would be shocked how common that is amongst traders. They'll come up with a trading strategy, they'll do it two or three times, it will lose money, and they'll say, I'm out of here. But you know, we know that even something 90% accurate can have massive runs of being incorrect. Right, Just okay. probabilities, right? Statistics. Okay, so now's where things get a little bit more detailed. Um, so think of each of these bars is like the line in the last graph, right? It, each of these bars is an individual study of 1,000 coin flips. Okay. Right? So each bar is a different time a guy flipped a coin a thousand times. You can see that in most cases, that was enough data to get um, an average here of... 50, right? It says 500, but this is for something different. But anyway, it's it's the average is 50%. But you can see that sometimes, but very rarely, 
the guy flipped the coin a lot, and he's showing a 54% heads, even after a 1,000 flips. Okay. And that's what, you know, this guy over here right. found. Right. And this guy over here found mm -hmm. the opposite. But generally speaking, you get this bell curve. And I'm sure you've heard about the bell curve when you're, like, marking tests, right? But basically what this is doing is it's showing, because you can never find, there's, you could flip a coin theoretically a billion times and in theory not get an exact 50-50 win rate. It could be, you know, 51 or 49 or, or whatever. So this is how we represent statistics, where we say if something is normally distributed, which means essentially perfectly random, they will develop curves like this. And what we say is that the peak of this curve right here is probably the correct answer. Mm -hmm. We'll never know 100% sure, and this gets in all kinds of crazy esoteric you know, nonsense, but we can tell by this graph that we are fairly, fairly certain that the probability of flipping a coin and hitting heads is 50%. But in some point, these are we get these tails in which things don't kind of go as planned. Right? Again, you could have a strategy that's 90% correct and still have a run of 100 trades that lose. The odds of it happening are very, very small, so they would be in what we call the tails of the distribution. right? And it's, there's also a chance that if you have a 90% st strategy that you're right 100% of the time for like right. five years. Yep. Right? Um, so again, these are happening in the tails. I getcha. So everything we've talked about so far is pure randomness. Right. right. These are all random trials, which is why, you know, you can use a coin flip or a dice roll or, or any any game that we understand what the probability is, but we know that it's sheer and out of, under randomness. Now we have our normal distribution, right? And our normal distribution is essentially this bell curve that says this area in the middle at the very height of the curve is probably our expected result from whatever game we're playing. And then anything that happens outside, we call standard deviations. So that's in the next one. And again, this- Bring me back to grade 12, right here? <laughs> this will all, and you at home too that are losing it, this all comes down to one point that is insanely powerful and kind of shows how you can make money trading. So there's, there's a huge end takeaway from this, I promise. It's <laughs> every, every, I needed to teach you everything up until this point to then explain to you how you can make money trading. Okay. Right? So you at home have a little faith. I know I, she's probably looking at the clock that's ticking how long <laughs> we've been live here and wondering what else she can do. But so again, you've got a strategy that is, and now we're gonna go and we're gonna translate this and say, okay, this is stock return data. If stock returns were random, there's a whole bunch of people out there, it's called efficient market hypothesis, that think that a stock return is random, that there's no way you can ever predict the market. Okay. Right? There's a massive, if you went to university, like I went to university to study stocks, they say there's technical analysis doesn't work, you can never make money, it's impossible to beat the market, which we know empirically is wrong, but it's, it's what's taught. So what you would expect to see if stocks were random is the same normal distribution, right? And the lines I have here on the bottom show that in what we call a standard deviation, which is how far away you are from that center point of value. Mm -hmm. um, one standard deviation, 68% of all of your um, occurrences should happen in that one standard deviation away from the, the mid. So for example, flipping a coin, we know the mid is gonna be 50%. We're basically saying that about 70% of every trial we ever do in our lives should be fairly close or one right. standard deviation away from 50%. Okay. Two standard deviations is 95, three standard deviations is 99. Everything that's random pretty much follows this exact curve if studied enough, okay. right? What we notice in actual trading, and this is the, this is the crux of it all, is we've studied, there's we, scientists, smarter people than me, have studied trading, they've studied markets, they've studied price movements, they find out they are not normally distributed. They do not follow this same normal distribution model that 
random type things do. They have what we call fat tails. So the difference between the this thin line, which is a normal distribution, and the thick line, which is a fat tail distribution, means that although often price is random, there's some randomness that, that pops around, there is more of a directional movement one way or the other in stocks than statistically should exist. So if trading was random, okay. right, it would follow that curve. Right. But it's not because these, so what basically what this means is that if it's random, you wouldn't get these runs in stocks that you do. They exist on this fat tail of the curve and that's where we're gonna go into. So again, the whole reason that I did this is that there's certain kinds of traders that every time they see something go up, they want to short it and have it come down. And every time it goes down, they want to buy it and have it go up because they think every price movement from day to day is random. Okay. Right? So if it's gone kind of up one day, it should revert back down others. Got it. Right? And however, there, there are people that trade that way and there is ways to trade that way and, and, and it's very successful. But... The fact that we have these fat tails mean that there are trends that exist in the market. So the bulk of the money that can be made out there is by hunting in that fat, that fat tail. So what that would look like for a chart is a stock that's trending up and is continuing to trend up in a non-random way, right? So what we assume causes these non-normal um, distributions is essentially you know, a, a stock moves higher and then you get crowd psychology on top of it. So I've talked about how everything I do is related to psychology before. And this is kind of like my mathematical proof about why I do it. Right? If things were random, they'd be normal. They're not normal, therefore not random. Therefore there's edge for us out there. And it kind of proves that it's in the whole crowd psychology of pushing the market. Okay. Was it worth it? Was what worth it? <laughs> All this was it worth it? The here is I've I've shown you the secret of trading. It's just right there. But essentially, what the the reason behind this and the reason I show you this is because we're going to teach you trend following methods, which basically means that you are going to find a trend that's already established. If the stock is moving higher, you're going to look for a place to enter, assuming that trends continue. And again, we know trends continue because the market is not normally distribute okay gotcha all right so i think i probably put everyone to sleep there but this is very very important so the next lesson we're going to go into trends um which i promised last week but we'll be doing next lesson and the reason we're doing that is now that we know that trend following systems have a statistical advantage over the market so the people at home, if there's one way to take away from this, if you're one of those guys who's trying to pick the top of the market because every you think everything reverts and pick the bottom and your strategy is not doing well with it, take a look at um, the data, right? You can go research it yourself. It's all there. That trends persist way longer than they should statistically um, because of psychology and therefore there's money to be made following trends. There you have it. Yeah, and if there's any questions, our, our links are in the in the description below. Um, just put something here that has all of our, our socials and everything. Um, go if you're on my channel, go give her a sub and vice versa. Same with Twitter. That's pretty much all I use to be honest. Um, if you're interested, we're gonna get her very soon on the Trade Ideas Simulator. There'll be a link and a discount code below as well. Full disclosure, it's an affiliate link, so it. It helps the channels and it, it's kind of the reason that we do all this. So 